Hello and welcome to Flight Path. I'm Chris Jones, Chief Marketing Officer at McCarran International Airport. From its beginnings as a small airport to one of the nation's busiest today, McCarran has grown into a vital part of the Las Vegas community. This year, the Department of Aviation proudly celebrates McCarran's evolution as it approaches a new milestone, its 70th anniversary. Here's a look back at where we've been and where we're going with some stories from some of the people who've been here for parts of the journey. McCarran Field was dedicated December 19, 1948. The site, a privately run airfield from 1943 until 1948, was newly named for Senator Pat McCarran, an aviation advocate who sponsored numerous laws concerning the early commercial aviation industry. When McCarran Field was transferred to county ownership, it served four airlines, Bonanza, Western, United, and TWA, and averaged just 12 flights a day. In the 1950s, Las Vegas hadn't yet grown up around the airport. By 1959, the number of daily flights at McCarran had increased to 73, with an average of 2,629 passengers a day. In the 1950s, the community is growing, the strip is growing, the airport planners are looking at, can we grow on the Las Vegas side or are we going to jump the field? And so they decide they are going to jump the field, build on Paradise Road. It was interesting, the media here thinks this is a terrible idea. It's called a white elephant basking in the desert sun. And yet, within just a couple of years, we have to already start planning again for the future. With passenger numbers on the rise, the 1960s saw the opening of a new terminal. In 1963, daily flights increased to 128 with nearly 49,000 passengers a day. By 1968, annual passenger volume grew to 3.5 million. And while scheduled international flights wouldn't become a major part of operations for several years, the airport's name was officially changed to McCarran International Airport. We pride ourselves on being an international airport, again, because we want the world to come here. And what we've learned is the world does want to come here. In the early 1970s, construction began on the A and B gates to accommodate increased traffic. 1972 saw McCarran as the 22nd busiest airport in the U.S. with 4.6 million annual passengers. It was a time before the age of personal private jets when everyone who flew to and from Las Vegas could be seen at McCarran, even celebrities. Because nobody had the private jets. That was not a big deal. I remember Lonnie Anderson coming in, she had, you know, sunglasses on trying to disguise herself. And it was just a day back then, you know, when there's Tom Selleck, or, you know, hey, there's Burt Reynolds. In 1978, the Clark County Board of Commissioners adopted the ambitious McCarran 2000 expansion plan. Among other things, the plan called for construction of new gates and a parking garage, as well as expanded baggage claim facilities. Over the years, the airport has been home to a variety of shops, restaurants, and bars. They had a cafeteria. They had a small bar. Later on, they changed that to Cheers Bar. And they had these dummies sitting there that looked just exactly like that guy Norm. And everybody thought that was real people sitting there. By 1982, annual passenger volume was more than 9.4 million. As McCarran raced to keep up, work on expansion projects and airport amenities continued. But as a kid, uh, we used to drive out to uh, park at the end of uh, what well, isn't Eastern because the airport didn't go that far out. Was ever road was shorter than that and we used to park and at the end of the fence and watch the airplanes land. That was pretty cool. Lots of people did that. So when we constructed the southernmost runway, we uh, put that viewing area in over on Sunset and the only mistake we made was not making it bigger because it is really popular. In 1987, the McCarran 2000 expansion was complete and the airport's commitment to the future of the community was apparent. The $300 million project quadrupled the size of the original terminal and added the Seagate satellite concourse. With traffic increasing at McCarran, the county purchased a general aviation airport in North Las Vegas. It would eventually become the second busiest airport in Nevada. In the 90s, a new decade and consistent growth in the number of travelers using the airport meant it was time for another terminal. The Charter International Terminal, later called Terminal 2, opened in 1991. By 1996, McCarran was North America's 10th busiest airport. Now we have the Vision 2020, which will, take, will guide us to what we're going to do for the next 20 years. You know, it's funny because I recall when working at the airport, there was this McCarran 2020 plan, and that was actually the capital plan, and what McCarran would look like in 2020, and here we are today in 2018. It, you know, and some of the other things that are interesting is, you know, we always talked about the McCarran mauve. You know, that was the color of, <laughs> at the time, you know, our uniforms were McCarran mauve. <laughs> 
As the 90s drew to a close, Las Vegas continued to draw tens of millions of visitors each year, and the airport evolved along with the community with yet another addition, the D Concourse. To see it being built each leg, I mean, it was again, it was just every time we watched it, we said, here's another piece of history. To see the land before it was a structure, and to see the changes over the years and the technology, and it was just amazing. The new millennium brought challenges, but the team at McCarran faced them head on. The terrorist attacks of September 11, 2001, devastated the nation and temporarily halted air travel. It was a game changer. I mean, it changed the airport environment forever. I was actually in, in Montreal uh, at an annual airport conference. We were all stranded. We couldn't get out of Montreal. So Rosemary was back here with the staff uh, taking care of what needed to be taken care of. I, I'm proud to say that she and her team were the first airport in the United States to get recertified to open back up. They did a fantastic job. Security concerns changed the way people traveled, resulting in the creation of the TSA and new methods of passenger screening. With all the changes, McCarran remained committed to top-notch customer service. Through technology and innovation, in 2003, McCarran became the first U.S. airport to install speed check kiosks, allowing customers to print a boarding pass from multiple locations throughout the airport. In 2005, with nearly 44.3 million travelers passing through, the northeast wing of the D concourse was completed, adding 11 new gates. Also in 2005, McCarran debuted the largest free airport Wi-Fi system in the U.S. Wireless was something that our passengers were then, more than a decade ago, and are still very, very excited about it. And we really led the world in helping to establish the common use kiosk. And that means that any airline can use any ticket counter or any gate position. And all to the benefit ultimately of our customers. 2007 was a record year with 47.7 million arriving and departing passengers. In April 2007, McCarran's Consolidated Rent-A-Car Center opened. The key thing that has happened in the time that I've been here has to do with consolidation. And my best memory of the airport has to do with just the opportunities. Uh, this is probably my eighth position since I started in the beginning, and I was a temp when I first started. So the thing that gets me excited is the fact that I know that the airport rewards effort. In 2008, to keep up with increasing passenger numbers, the airport debuted the Sea Annex Security Checkpoint and the Northwest Wing of the D Concourse. One, two, three. Looking forward, never back, McCarran saw the future of this community. In 2012, Terminal 3 opened with 14 gates. Yo, so Las Vegas. 2017, an underground tunnel connecting the D gates to T3's Customs Hall allowed for twice as many international gates. Recent improvements in Terminal 1 ticketing and baggage claim demonstrate the continued commitment to the future of this airport and this community. We are truly the gateway to Las Vegas. Um, the airport has grown a lot. I started in 91. And so Terminal 3 was really probably that defining moment for me that, wow, this is, we're really getting big. <laughs> you know? McCarran's transformation continues. Its growth and success over the last 70 years wouldn't have been possible without committed employees, bold decision makers, and a unique destination designed to entice travelers to return year after year. The airport here in Las Vegas is part of the community. We're part of that economic engine. We can make a difference. As the gateway to Southern Nevada, McCarran will continue its commitment to passengers, employees, and the community, all while constantly evolving to remain a world-class transportation hub. Being prepared for an airport emergency takes practice and planning. The team at McCarran trains year-round, so they're ready for any situation. Every three years, all those involved in airport safety come together for a full-scale emergency exercise. Here's a look at the most recent drill and how it will benefit the well-being of the airport and its travelers. Personnel ready at the standby position to bring on uh, units from all sites. The Federal Aviation Administration requires all U.S. airports to maintain an emergency plan in order to keep their certification. Part of that plan involves emergency response personnel's participation in a full-scale exercise once every three years. A mock disaster was created to test the airport's preparedness. Blaring sirens, billowing smoke, and dozens of dazed and wounded people scattered along the airfield, creating a sense of realism. A key element of the drill, known as the triennial exercise, was the need for advanced planning and community-wide participation. Police, fire, paramedics, and other emergency response agencies took part in the exercise. We do this because it gives us an opportunity to explore how we interact with other agencies outside of the airport. This way, in the event that such an occurrence would occur, we can utilize everyone 
done with multiple communications and equipment. Nearly 120 airmen from Nellis Air Force Base served as volunteer victims in the exercise. An elaborate makeup process replicated injuries that would likely be seen in an actual aircraft emergency. During the drill, medical responders triaged the patients, determining what level of care was needed before directing the injured to the appropriate medical facility. This is a full-scale exercise, and we do that because it gives realism and continuity to how the operations would feel in a high-stress environment where all the players are working in a concerted effort and not just doing a tabletop exercise. The exercise featured a scenario that limited participants' advanced knowledge of what unfolded around them, a technique meant to improve their abilities to react quickly and correctly under duress. Key personnel from participating agencies watched and responded to the incident from within the airport's emergency operations center as they gathered pertinent information. An exercise like today's, you go through the exercise, you get the value of the exercise, and then after that you'll see individual conversations going, okay, so you do this, we do that, and it's, and it's very valuable. McCarran staged the full-scale simulation at a location near the ramp area, far enough removed to minimize the impact on normal airport operations. As a result of months of planning and preparation, combined with this realistic practice, McCarran and the agencies that support it are better prepared should there be a real emergency. McCarran is self-supporting and does not receive taxpayer money. Instead, the airport is funded by various revenue sources, including many outside of the airlines. Here's a look at advertising as a revenue source and some of the unique ways advertisers reach potential customers. On a typical day, more than 130,000 travelers pass through McCarran, making the airport a great spot for advertisers to reach a broad sampling of both domestic and international customers. To capitalize on this ever-changing audience, airport advertising companies use innovative methods to attract attention to their clients' products and services. Ads can easily be seen around McCarran on large video walls, small digital displays, and even the parking garage. Virtually any part of the airport, from baggage claim to taxi queues to buses and trams, can be an advertiser's canvas for reaching a large audience. The revenues generated by advertising help offset the fees the Department of Aviation charges its airline partners, a coordinated effort that's a key factor to the success of the local tourism industry. One of the major components of non-airline revenue is advertising. We've worked really hard with our advertising company to maximize that revenue, which helps us keep the costs low to the air carriers and helps make it more affordable to come to Las Vegas as a destination. In a first for McCarran, airport advertisers have wrapped the interior of four automated trams with floor-to-ceiling ads. Each car interior was covered with 660 square feet of material that required eight hours to install, with each piece of high-resolution wrap pre-cut by a custom machine. In Terminal 1, many passengers arrive and head straight to baggage claim. With its high ceilings and ample wall space, the area is ideal for displaying ads. Currently, we're working with our airport advertiser to replace all the backlit signs with new digital signs. This allows us to replace the advertisement or put multiple advertisements on one sign. In the coming months, newer nanolumens LED displays will allow ad content to change every few seconds or for clients to buy out an entire space for integrated and dynamic messaging that could cover all of baggage claim for a few seconds or longer based on the client's preferences and budget. Another opportunity for advertising is the Rent-A-Car Center. So we have a lot of people come here that rent a car while they're on their trip and it's a nice audience to capture and it's a nice market that we can focus advertising towards. Airport advertising companies are using technology to reach customers going to McCarran's Rent-A-Car Center, placing digital monitors within the buses that serve the center. With more than 7 million passengers using the bus system every year, the ads are certain to find a large audience. With unique and innovative methods of attracting travelers' attention, advertisers will continue to be a valuable revenue source for McCarran. For individuals with intellectual or developmental disabilities, airports pose unique challenges. Here's a look at a program aimed at making travel a little easier for those individuals and their families. For the second year in a row, the team at McCarran partnered with Allegiant Airlines and Families for Effective Autism Treatment to host a Wings for Autism event. Hi, how are you? An airport practice run specially designed for people on the autism spectrum and their travel companions. By rehearsing for a flight ahead of time, families can prepare for the real thing, making sure future vacations go smoothly. 
Autistic children sometimes have trouble adjusting to new situations. Through Wings for Autism, they gain exposure to the unfamiliar, the hustle and bustle of a busy travel hub. At the same time, families and caregivers can see how they react to a variety of airport situations. This just gives them the practice um, to hopefully we're being proactive so they can have a successful trip later on. So a lot of stimuli, a lot of lights, noises, sounds, things like that can be hard for a lot of our kids. Wings for Autism offers a unique opportunity to practice entering the airport, checking in, getting boarding passes, your ticket. Good morning. Thank you. going through security and boarding a plane. At this time, we would like to welcome you to board. Hi, yes. welcome. Once on the plane, children learn about the various sights and sounds they might encounter while in flight. So being able to show him and practice it so that he can see what it's going to be like and that it's actually okay. Is, is the most important part. This is helping us prepare for the opportunity to get on a plane and see how she's going to do and see what we need to do as a family. Wings for Autism also gives airport employees a valuable opportunity to observe, interact, and deliver their services in a structured educational environment. This program kind of allows, you know, TSA and airline staff and airports to, you know, talk with families, learn more about people with intellectual disabilities, and, you know, better ways to support them in air travel. Aviation professionals learn to anticipate their customers' needs and offer a better overall travel experience. It's not only a great program for families that have kids that are on the scale that need that experience um, to get familiar with travel, but it's great for the airport employees, for the TSA, for our crew members to get to learn patience and how to interact with different families and different types of people that they might encounter while traveling. In addition to the Wings for Autism event, the airport is working with Magnus Mode to offer a customized mobile app that helps people with autism and other special needs navigate the airport. By providing a safe environment in which to learn how to navigate the airport, Wings for Autism can alleviate some of the stress families affected by autism might experience when traveling by air. Drones have become popular both for recreational and commercial purposes. The Federal Aviation Administration has rules and regulations for the use of these aircraft and for their operators. Here are some of the do's and don'ts that apply to drones. An unmanned aircraft system, or drone, is an aircraft without a pilot on board. Instead, the drone is controlled by an operator on the ground. Drones can be small, relatively inexpensive, and readily purchased online and at many stores. Because these aircraft have the capability to fly almost anywhere, special rules and regulations have been put in place by the Federal Aviation Administration to protect public safety. If you have a drone that weighs between 9 ounces and 55 pounds, you are required by the FAA to register your drone. So the FAA has a website. It's a great website for people to get all kinds of information about where to fly legally, how to get a license, how to register your drone. If you're going to be using your drone for commercial purposes, you are required to get a Part 107 certificate. Since the FAA's rules for use of small drones went into effect in 2016, more than 100,000 people have obtained remote pilot certificates to fly drones for non-recreational purposes. The majority of drone pilots get certified by studying online materials and then passing an initial aeronautical knowledge test at an FAA-approved knowledge testing center. The certificate is valid for two years, after which time it must be renewed. So the person has to understand there's more to than more to just flying this thing and having fun. There's liability, and that's really what they have to understand. They are dealing with aircraft that operates in the national airspace. You have to follow the rules, so it's a pathway of education. McCarran International, North Las Vegas, and Henderson Executive Airports are operated by the Department of Aviation and fall within the managed airspace of the Federal Aviation Administration. Without specific authorization from the FAA, drones are not allowed in areas around airports. One really important message that the FAA wants to get across is drones and airports don't mix. And it's very important that if you are going to fly a UAS in Las Vegas class private airspace, make sure you educate yourself and make sure you have all the correct information before you go out and fly. Anyone operating a drone is responsible for flying within FAA guidelines and regulations. That means knowing, before takeoff, where it is and where it is not safe to fly. For information on registering a drone, airspace restrictions, and where and how to fly, visit the FAA's website at www.faa.gov UAS. To reach out to our growing number of Hispanic customers, each episode of Flight Path features a segment in Spanish with English subtitles. Here's Gabrielle Muro to tell us more about some of the airline lounges that offer select passengers comforts beyond what's available in the airport terminal. 
Para los viajeros frecuentes, los salones del aeropuerto ofrecen un escape de ambiente ajeteado del aeropuerto, con cómodos asientos, buena comida y televisores de pantalla grande. Los salones son un buen lugar para descansar y relajarse antes o después de un vuelo. Cuando usted quiere cumplir con un poco de trabajo o ponerse al día con los correos electrónicos, nuestros salones proporcionan Wi-Fi de alta velocidad gratis. Y los escritorios con fuentes de alimentación permiten a los clientes utilizar y cargar sus portátiles y otros dispositivos electrónicos. En el aeropuerto McCarran hay cuatro lugares que proporcionan a los viajeros un lugar tranquilo para relajarse, descansar, comer o trabajar. En el vestíbulo D, el Salón Centurion está disponible exclusivamente para los miembros de la tarjeta American Express. Los servicios incluyen comida gourmet, cócteles especiales, listas de vinos disponibles y espacios para trabajar. You know, it provides people a little bit of privacy and, and, and a little getaway well, uh, from the crowds that frequent every airport. So it's just nice to be able to escape it a little bit. También en el vestíbulo de está el Club United, que atiende a los pasajeros que viajan en la aerolínea United o en una de sus aerolíneas compañeras. Los miembros pueden relajarse y recargarse en el tranquilo escondite mientras disfrutan del bar gratuito, aperitivos ligeros, conexión Wi-Fi gratuita y mucho más. And here I could have a little oasis, I could be away from everything, it's uh, great, I could enjoy a drink at the bar, I could enjoy some food. Si usted no viaja lo suficiente como para justificar el pago de un hambre mesía anual al salón, el Club LAS proporciona acceso para todos los pasajeros con la compra de un pasaje de un día en la recepción. También puede obtener acceso con una tarjeta de Priority Pass dos ubicaciones convenientes, una en el vestíbulo D y una en las puertas de embarque E en el terminal 3. Ofrecen todas las comodidades para que cualquier viajero se sienta como un VIP. There's actually a shower in the back which is kind of cool and I can print my boarding pass. Um, so it's really, really nice. Así que la próxima vez que viaje al aeropuerto McCarran, si busca paz y tranquilidad, asistencia personal o un lugar privado para hacer algo de trabajo, piense en visitarnos en uno de estos salones del aeropuerto. Para obtener más información sobre los servicios y comodidades que se ofrecen en cada ubicación, visite McCarran.com Salones. For health-conscious travelers, finding good food on the go can be challenging. Master Airport Restaurant Tour HMS host rises to the challenge by offering a wide variety of meals and snacks to meet a variety of dietary needs and preferences. Airports are places where customers have an array of food choices, from grab-and-go meals and snacks to sit-down restaurants. McCarran has a diverse assortment travelers can choose from. For customers who have food allergies or those who simply prefer to stick to a specific diet, airport restaurants offer vegan, vegetarian, and gluten-free options. HMS Host is really engaging with our customer, and our customer are health-focused. They're really looking for those options. Customers looking for lighter fare while traveling can visit the PGA Tour Grill. Where menu items include the Greek salad, grilled salmon, and a turkey burger, the restaurant also features the popular power salad with quinoa, tomato, roasted peppers, garbanzo beans, arugula, avocado, and fresh herbs. To give health-conscious travelers more ways to fuel their journeys, HMS Host recently introduced a new array of meals, snacks, and beverages. We have developed with several nutritionists is paleo boxes and lunch boxes and protein boxes. They're all under 500 calories, no high fructose corn syrup, no added sweeteners. It's really that experience to be able to go into an airport and eat healthy. The new Eat Well Travel Further items are available at Fresh Attractions Kiosk. There are food and beverages based on popular wellness trends such as organic probiotic beverages, wholesome snacks like kale chips, roasted chickpeas, and organic dried fruit. Vegan and vegetarian diners can visit Payway, where the menu includes edamame, vegetable spring rolls, vegetarian fried rice, and vegetarian lo mein noodles. For travelers who are craving a burger but still want to eat meat-free, 
PGA Tour Grill, Sammy's Beach Bar and Grill, Jose Cuervo Tequileria, Las Vegas Chop House, and Burke in the Box offer the Impossible Burger. For those passengers who are looking for a vegan option, um, it's a great option to try. It tastes amazing, and it's really a revolutionary product. For passengers with gluten sensitivities, California Pizza Kitchen and Wolfgang Puck in the D Yates offers gluten-free pizzas. And gluten-free snacks and salads are available at restaurants throughout the airport. For more information, visit our website, mccarran.com, for all the available dining options at McCarran. Las Vegas is one of the top destinations in the world, attracting millions of tourists each year. As a gateway to Southern Nevada, McCarran's goal is to make each visitor feel like a VIP. With the help of a program organized by the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department, a dedicated group of volunteers at the airport are at your service. Can I have you, sir? We are looking for Delta Airlines. 14 or 16 all the way down. Oh, 14, 16, thank yeah. you. The Metro Volunteer Program began in 1996 when local leaders saw a need for a volunteer force to enhance the police department's service for the growing community. This unique volunteer workforce serves residents and visitors alike. Dedicated airport volunteers known as Viva Volunteers work exclusively at McCarran. These ambassadors provide a valuable service to passengers. The friendly volunteers are easily spotted in bright yellow shirts around ticketing, baggage claim, and other high traffic areas. When I retired about uh, eight years ago, I was looking for something else to do, and I knew a couple of guys that were part of the program, and they were telling me about it, and I thought, wow, what a cool thing to do. It's just still a, a, a way for me to give back to my community, not only re representing locals, but also our visitors. McCarran's volunteers must pass a background check and attend multiple training sessions. Some classes cover police operations, while others are specific to volunteering at McCarran. The airport-specific classes give an overview of common questions from travelers and train volunteers to give much appreciated guidance around this busy travel hub. Many of our volunteers are travelers, so they know the experiences that people have when they go to different countries or to different airports that they're not familiar with. So they've been there and they want to be helpful. Thank okay, you very thank much. you. Have a nice day. More than 90 volunteers work a variety of shifts at the airport. They make calls if customers need medical assistance, give directions, and reunite passengers if someone gets lost. The team also serves as additional eyes and ears for the Metro Police Airport Bureau. I'm retired, so it gets me out of the house. I get a chance to help anywhere between 100, 150 people a day, answering questions, giving directions, things such as that. And then it helps Metro and it helps give back a little to the community. 21, it's right, it's right down there. Verbal communication and problem solving skills are important yeah. qualities of the job. The Viva volunteers are required to serve a minimum of eight hours per month, but several give more time simply because they enjoy the bustling airport environment. But most say they just love helping people. I met this family, they were refugees. I don't remember what country, but their English wasn't real good, but they came up to me, they were trying to find their sponsor. Their first time in the airport, first time in the United States. As it turned out, their sponsor was just at the other end of the terminal but I was able to put them together and it felt really, really good. You know, it's for reasons like that that I'm here. From locating luggage to locating people and giving directions, this volunteer workforce draws on a rich heritage of unique skills to help people. And it's why this dedicated team of Viva volunteers are at your service. Now you're ready to pack your bags and fly the sky, so have a great trip. Remember to check us out on Facebook and follow us on Twitter and use all the resources of our website, mccarran.com. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time on Flight Path.